I believe it was Aristotle that said, the whole is worth more than the sum of its parts. Today we are doing the exact opposite of that with destructuring declarations that allow us to break whole things into its individual parts to make it easier to work with. Welcome to Kotlin Tips, I'm Seb and we'll dive right in. Let's say you have a pair in your application. Doesn't matter where that comes from. Uh, in my case, I'm just going to have a pair of a metal color uh, and the placement. So first place gets gold. If we want to be one of the cool kids, we of course don't use the pair constructor like I just did. Um, we use the infix2 function. Same thing, doesn't really matter. Now here's the question. How do you get the individual parts out of this pair again? Well, you might say, well, the metal is the first part of the pair and the placement is the second part of the pair. And I mean, you'd be right, this works. But there's a more convenient way to do this as well, which is where we're using destructuring declarations. Destructuring declarations allow us to do the same thing, so having the metal and the placement uh, in a single assignment. Isn't that a little bit more elegant? All you have to do is use the parentheses uh, to specify that you are defining multiple variables and then our pair, for example, will be automatically destructured. You can even see that the type hints are showing us that, well, our first part is a string, second part is an integer. If you are saying, well, I don't have a lot of pairs in my code, then first of all, good on you, giving things names and putting them in classes and such is a good practice. Um, but still, I've got something for you as well. Let's say we just have a fruit basket instead, which just is a list of an apple, uh, a banana, and a cherry. Well, what if I told you that you could destructure this as well? And you could have the first, second, and third fruit uh, destructured from your fruit basket. That's kind of cool, isn't it? With this, you have to be a little bit careful because a list can be of arbitrary length, so there's nothing stopping me uh, from also getting a fourth element where there is no fourth element in the list. So yeah, you should be careful and uh, really make sure that your list items exist, otherwise you're gonna run into trouble. And at that point, maybe it would just be a better idea to just use the regular bracket syntax. Let's briefly return to our medals again, um, because this also works for maps. So let's say I have a map for the medals. We'll have the first place, which gets gold, we'll have the second place, which gets silver, and we'll have the third place, which gets bronze. If you want to loop over both the keys and the values uh, in your map, you also use destructuring declarations to make this a little bit easier. So you can have key and value in medals in your for loop, and you can see that this destructures your key value pairs for easy iteration. And if you're destructuring it like this, uh, and you actually happen to not need uh, either the value or the key, uh, you can replace these names with an underscore um, and essentially kind of remove it from your iteration there. Though, at least for a simple case like this, if you're just iterating over the values in your uh, map, it might be easier to just say uh, for value in metals.values directly. Might be a little bit more expressive. But as it turns out, you can also do this for your own classes. Uh, let's say you have a person class which specifies a name as a string and an address as a string. If you create one of these objects, uh, let's call him John, which is John Maynard, um, and he lives in Munich because that's where I'm located, then you can actually also destructure this object using this de declaration. So for example, we could just have the name uh, and the address uh, assigned from John. Now this might look really amazing and crazy and you might be inclined to sprinkle this all over your code now, but it does come with a couple of caveats. Let me show you what I mean. Let's say we refactor the person class and a person now also has an age. And let me also change uh, the age up here to be like 20. Now, when we look at our code, we see that something that was called name and address before is actually now uh, name and age, even though we give it a different name here. The issue in this situation is that Kotlin uses position-based destructuring. With position-based destructuring, when you change the order um, of the components for a class, um, that also means that the destructuring behavior changes. So probably don't do this for something like a person object, 
But instead, if you have uh, simple classes that are just key value pairs, or let's say if you have a data class, which is a vector two, which just defines uh, an X and Y coordinate, then this seems a lot more reasonable. So let's say we have a vector two, five and seven, then we might need the X and Y coordinates to do some math. And then this kind of assignment is pretty reasonable because you can expect these not to change order. Name-based structure declaration is something that has been discussed for the language, but so far it's not on the direct roadmap. Uh, you can find a U-Track issue on the topic if you want to give your own vote or uh, share your opinion on this topic uh, with the team. But how does this actually work under the hood? Because I just showed that you can do this with a data class. And if you think that means you can do it with an arbitrary class, you would be right. The magic that happens here are so-called component functions. Let me show you what I mean. If I remove the data attribute for my class, you can see that IntelliJ complains about uh, this assignment. And specifically, it says it's missing the component one and component two functions. We can just create these really quickly um, and tell him that these return integers. And then we can kind of manually fill in the body for these component functions. So that kind of gets the same deal done. Summing it up, as you can see, destructuring declarations are really just a fancy syntactic sugar for calling these types of component functions. So now you even have an idea of how these destructuring declarations work under the hood and how you can use them for yourself. To recap, if you have pairs, destructuring declarations are a great idea. If you have arrays or lists and you want to use the destructuring declarations, make sure that you can somehow prove to yourself uh, that the elements that you're destructuring are actually existing in the list or array. And if you want to use destructuring declarations for your own classes, make sure that these are classes that don't change their order ever. Otherwise, use the scope functions from Kotlin uh, to access things conveniently. We'll have another video on that in the future. I do hope you learned something new. Uh, one of the fun cases where you can actually use destructuring declarations is using the measure timed value function. Uh, which allows you to figure out how long your code takes while also returning a value. We have another quick tip for that as well. Maybe watch that next if you haven't yet. See you in the next one.